Hi everybody, Dr. Britt Talley Daniel, MD, under all the headache doctor, and I'm making another YouTube movie today on a strange migraine subject entitled Migraine with Brainstem Aura. And this was first written about by Dr. Bicker Staff in a seminal article he published in The Lancet in 1961, in which he titled it Basler Artery Migraine. And he began the article with the following statement with a quote from Aratius, a Greek physician from Cappadocia, about 100 years AD. If darkness possesses your eyes and the head be whirled around with dizziness and the ears ring as from the sound of rivers rolling along with a great noise, or like the wind when it roars among the sails, or like the clang of pipes or reeds, or like the rattling of a carriage, we call the affection scotoma or vertigo. The MOBA vertigo is heaviness of head, sparkles of light in the eyes along with much darkness, ignorance of themselves and those around. And if the disease goes on increasing, the limbs sink down below them and they crawl on the ground. There's nausea and vomiting of phlegm or of yellow or black bilious matter. Whoa. So, what is migraine with brainstem aura? Well, according to the International Classification of Headache Disorders, number three, it could be abbreviated as ICHD3, migraine with brainstem aura, which is abbreviated MBA, and I may use that during the talk. Migraine with brainstem aura has previously used terms. It's been called Basler artery migraine, Basler migraine, Vicker step type migraine, and Basler type migraine, all these names. Well, migraine with brainstem aura is described as migraine with aura, plain old migraine with aura symptoms that originate from the brainstem, but does not have any motor weakness. The diagnostic criteria are you have to have migraine with aura symptoms clearly originating from the brainstem, and then they need to have, so they got to have migraine with aura and criteria for that, and then they have to have at least two of the following fully reversible brainstem symptoms. And I'm going to list them. Dysarthria, which means slurring of speech. Vertigo, which means spinning, usually. Tinnitus, which is ringing or sounds in the ear. Hypoacusis, which is decreased hearing. Diplopia, which is double vision. Ataxia, not attributable to sensory deficit. Ataxia means off balance. Decreased levels of consciousness and the no motor or retinal symptoms. Uh, ICDH3 says that dysarthria should be distinguished from aphasia, which is a different neurologic problem. Vertigo does not embrace and should be distinguished from dizziness. And dizziness is a vague medical symptom. It has about 200 different things that can cause it. Up to 90% of patients with dizziness have anxiety or panic symptoms. This criteria for uh, migraine and brainstem R is not fulfilled by a sensation of fullness in the ear. That doesn't count. Diplopia does not embrace or exclude blur vision, so that's not included. The Glasgow, Com scale, Glasgow Coma Scale score may have been assessed during admission of the patient, but alternately deficits clearly describe the patient's allow estimation using the Glasgow Coma Scale. When motor symptoms are present, you have to use hemiplegic migraine. Now originally the terms basilar artery migraine or basilar migraine were used, but since the involvement of the basilar artery is now considered to be unlikely, the term migraine and brainstem aura is preferred. There are typical aura symptoms in addition to the brainstem symptoms during most attacks. So mo many patients who have attacks of brainstem with aura with migraine also a, a report other just typical attacks of migraine with our events. Now, many of the symptoms listed under the criteria as listed above can occur with anxiety or hyperventilation are therefore subject to misinterpretation. Nosology. Well, I've already mentioned this to some degree, but it's been called basilar type migraine, basilar migraine, basilar artery migraine, and Bickerstep migraine. Pathophysiology. Bickerstaff, writing in 1961, invoked the vascular hypothesis to explain this 
which was the prevailing theory in neurology at the time. And he used the term basal artery migraine, which was referable to the brainstem or to biaccipital hemispheres. In a later publication, he acknowledged that he had opened, quote, rather loosely termed, end quote, this condition, basilar artery migraine. There's no evidence that the basilar artery is involved in this condition, and abnormal flows of the basilar artery had never been proven in MBA. Two cases, one with familial hemiplegic migraine with MBA-like symptoms, and one with MBA have shown ictal spasm of the basilar artery on angiography. That means during the event, ictal, there was spasm of the arteries in the brain when they did an arteriogram. Another reported case showed reduced mean flow velocity in both posterior cerebral arteries um, during a single MVA episode with resolution of this after the aura. Despite these reports, it's unlikely that reversible ischemia, that means lack of blood, is a source of the prolonged symptoms that occur with MVA. Cortical spreading depression, however, is believed to be the neuronal mechanism that generates migraine with brainstem aura symptoms, similar to the typical visual R's that occur in migraine. So the current hypothesis is that cortical spreading depression either occurs in the brainstem or simultaneously in bicerebral parts of the cerebral cortex. The clinical description of attack, well, it usually starts with R symptoms, which may be decreased hearing ability, dysarthria, loss of consciousness, which then would be termed syncope or fainting, vertigo, ataxia, tinnitus, or double vision. After the R, the pain in the migraine brainstem event usually locates bilaterally to the occipital part of the head with worsening headache, typical nausea and vomiting, kind of just like with a migraine attack. Vertigo, slurred speech, tinnitus, and double vision are the most common reported symptoms with this entity. Some individuals experience disorientation or confusion in addition to transient loss of consciousness. And that's termed syncope. But most individuals with MBA first experience symptoms during late adolescence and their 20s. Frequency. Well, migraine raised MRI is a rare episodic event. It occurs in 1.5% of persons with headache. MBA occurs in about 10% of individuals who get migraine with typical visual aura. Sexual preference, it occurs most commonly in men and women of all ages, but more frequently in adolescent girls, just like migraine. Migraine has a three to one increased attack frequency between men, women and men. The etiology of this, migraine that brings to aura is Family. Genetic studies have now identified at least three genes that cause the familial form of hemiplegic migraine. These genes all cause dysfunction of ion channels on brain nerve cells and lead to increased levels of glutamate, an excitatory brain neurotransmitter which relates to spreading depression. These are found with familial hemiplegic migraine, but they're not found with migraine with brain stem aura. So, genetic testing is not indicated for MBA. What's the duration of attack? The R symptoms can last from two minutes to over an hour, but not over 60 minutes. They're followed by the throbbing headache, which is off in the back of the head, and nausea, and like a regular migraine attack, the headache pain may last four to 72 hours. How do you make a diagnosis? Well, it's made clinically, usually by a neurologist, by analysis of the usual signs and symptoms. There's no single neurologic test that confirms the diagnosis, and testing should be pursued, but it should all be normal. So what kind of test do you do? What is the workup? What's the neurologic workup? Well, you need specialized blood work, 24-hour heart monitoring, an MRI brain scan, MRA, which is magnetic, magnetic resonance arteriogram scan of the cerebral arteries, 
and you need an EEG or an electroencephalogram. What's the differential diagnosis of this? Well, it's a large group of things. Any disorder interrupting vertebral basilar vasculature, vestibular migraine, your brain. Cadasil, C-A-D-A-S-I-L, Melas, M-E-L-A-S, posterior foster vascular and congenital abnormalities, arterial venous malformation, Arnold Chiari malformations, cavernous angioma, and lastly, platybasia. Now, migraine with brainstem R can be confused with another rare type of migraine, which is hemiplegic migraine. But people who have hemiplegic migraine typically experience weakness of the arm and face as part of their migraine aura. And that rules out uh, migraine with brainstem aura. What's the treatment? Well, triptans or drugs with ergotamine or dihydroergotamine like DHE should not be used for fear of arterial spasm. For acute therapy, simple analgesics like NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, and anti-emetic medications such as Bittergen, which is promethazine, or Zofran, which is odansetron, can help with the nausea. For preventive therapy, older medical articles have suggested verapamil or tripiramate. There are no randomized trials regarding how best to treat migraine with brainstem R due to its very infrequent occurrence. MBA attacks are rare and sort of a one-time only event, so prevention is usually not usually is a moot point. And there's no published data on treatment of MBA with the new GPAT drugs, which came out in March of 2020 for acute therapy for migraine, or CGRP drugs that all came out in uh, 2018 for prevention of migraine, which were Amavig, Ajovi, or Mgality. What's the prognosis? Well, attacks of MBA may decrease with age, and since MBA is rare, there's not much published on the long-term outcome for this, this disorder. The attacks are severe, but usually resolve on their own without permanent complication. However, like migraine with aura, MBA carries a slight risk for stroke or what might be called meagerness infarction. I want to go over a case Dr. Bickerstaff reported. It was case one, it was a 13 year old girl. This is from his article. And she had four menstrual periods, and three days after the end of each, she had an attack in which she experienced the flashes. usually have stacks in a quadrant or half of the visual field, but not the visual field completely in both eyes. At the same time, this young girl had tingling in both hands and feet, and her speech became so slurred as to be barely intelligible. She then became ataxic on attempting to walk. These symptoms lasted 15 minutes and then subsided and were followed by a severe throbbing occipital headache and vomiting. After vomiting, she felt better. Many migraine patients will tell you that. She would sleep for several hours and awaken free from headache. Her father and auntie also had a severe migraine. The visual symptoms that come with this syndrome or with migraine are tachopsia, flashing lights, wavy lines, or negative scotomas such as graying of vision or visual loss usually herald the onset of attack. An important difference from the visual involvement that occurs with migraine with the aura and that with migraine with brainstem aura, as I've already mentioned this, is that the whole visual field in both eyes is involved with MBA. Short duration, complete loss of vision is not uncommon. The numbness and or tingling affects the mouth, hands, and feet to just above the wrist and ankles. Numbness, which is bilateral, comes after the visual symptoms. Right and left side of the mouth and tongue are affected. Next, vertigo and often tinnitus occur. The patient develops a midline cerebellar type syndrome with gait ataxia, such as would be seen in involvement of the cerebellar vermis and alcoholism. The patient develops dysarthria, or slurring of speech with an off-balance gait, does give the appearance of drunkenness. And Dr. Bickerstaff noted that patients who have attacks while driving have had difficult encounters with the police. Some patients develop impairment of consciousness, which may be mild drowsiness, a stroke, or head injury. 
Some patients appear asleep, although the difference is they may be aroused only to sleep back again when stimulation stops. Like the symptoms of migraine with R, the symptoms of migraine with brainstem R usually regress in the order of appearance. Thus, vision returns, the numbness, ataxia dysarthria resolve. A severe throbbing neck and occipital located headache ensues, sometimes expanded to the whole head and accompanied by severe vomiting. Untreated, the headache may last hours and improves with sleep. Finally, the patient rallies back awake feeling exhausted. So that's my comments regarding this rare neurologic condition called migraine with brainstem aura. Uh, I have a longer article on my webpage on this. If you go to www.drmigraine.com, you go to miscellanea migranica, that the article is in there, and I have a huge bibliography there also. So you watchers of my YouTube today, please click subscribe if you want to follow me. God bless all you people with migraine, especially ones with this unusual type of migraine, and I'll see you later.